So you're welcome to Site 127, Creativity and Problem Solving Skills. We have dealt with so many topics so far on creativity, and this week we want to proceed with convergent thinking. Last week we dealt with divergent thinking, with a vis a vis the concept of ideation. Can somebody quickly in the class tell me um, if you just know it, raise your hand or just indicate you can interject. I want to see whether you can still remember the concept of ideation and some of the basic, what you have learned. Can you quickly remind me what have you learned about ideation vis-a-vis -vis divergent thinking? Can somebody quickly interject, please, to save time? I just need to have an idea that will cost something there. Okay, sir. Mm. Go ahead. Okay, ideation is uh, is the third stage of design thinking. Yes, yeah. it's the third stage of design thinking, and it's just generally about bringing up different ideas, different a broad set of ideas, as many ideas as possible on a given topic without trying to like critique the ideas. You're just mm -hmm. pouring out ideas to be able to get as many as possible. That's a good one, and that those ideas are targeted at doing what? Remember the title of the course itself. Creativity and problem solving. They are targeted at what? Yeah, they are targeted. They are targeted to solve problems. Exactly. That don't forget that. That's our solve a specific problem. Yes, exactly. To solve specific problems. That's why the beginning point is to identify the problem and articulate it properly. Properly, and then do a lot of incubation on those problems, like literature review. Get useful information. You can bit incubate on it before you now go into uh, ideation as it were. So we've gone through that background. So when you generated a lot of ideas like that, the next thing now is to apply convergent thinking on those ideas you have generated. Are you following? And that will involve critical thinking. And that is what we are going into today. Um, by way of reflection, I know the time is, I mean, we have a short time, but it's still very important to me that I share no matter how short a word with you on reflection time. Some of these words can save somebody's life, I can assure you. I said, and for, it's taken from Proverbs 8, 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Let me tell you, the quest of creativity and problem solving skills, this class, is achievement of this, is to fulfill this verse, is to come up with witty inventions and solutions. Let me tell you the truth. Your prosperity is in it. You know, the Lord can use the knowledge, the application of your knowledge, I mean, of the knowledge you are gaining from this class to announce it to your world because I mean, most of the things we are celebrating and solutions we are celebrating in the world today, you know, they are products of creativity and problem solving skills. And they, evolve, they end up evolving what you call witty inventions and creativity. You know, look at aeroplane for aeroplane for instance. Look at the internet. Look at the, even the app, the telephone we use in a mobile phone and so many other kind of inventions all over the world. They are all products of creativity and problem solving skill. And as you learn this particular, so, and it's a product of wisdom, is application of knowledge. Now, I want to keep reminding you that knowledge that is not applied is, you know, to improve the standard of living of people is wasted knowledge. That's the essence of education, is the heart of, I mean, so the art of doing this is what, that correct application of knowledge is what we call wisdom. Is the, and wisdom is the highest or zenith of learning. You know, I've shared with you the pathway of learning from general information to knowledge to wisdom. That wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. And to be able to correctly apply, apply knowledge to create witty inventions, you need to apply the principles of creativity. And that is what we're actually studying in this course. And I see God changing your level and announcing you to your world as to apply these principles in Jesus' name. So remember again, diverging, we are back to the course now. Divergent thinking, thinker, and then convert, con, there, are, there are two classes of thinkers in the world, as it were. Some are divergent thinkers and some are convergent thinkers. Now, or you can say convergent thinking. Now, think, this set of thinkers, they think of all possible ways to reach a solution. Whereas the convergent thinkers think of a final solution. Our education system presently is actually built around convergent thinking. And it makes our learning very narrow. Okay, I'm telling you the truth. When you give people questions and you expect only one correct answer from them, that's actually a, 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 a display of convergent thinking. It stifles creativity. 
Because there are so many ways you can solve the same problem. And that is one fundamental thing we need to understand. And that is actually what we bring out witty inventions and creativity innovations, something that nobody has ever done before, thinking out of the box. So what is convergent thinking? Simply put, convergent thinking is the ability to find the correct solution using a critical thinking approach. Out of the uh, plethora of um, ideas you have generated through the process of ideation, you now begin to critically analyze each idea to now see which one is the best and most feasible and cost effective out of all those ideas you have generated. And then you now put it to a test run called pilot study. And then you now come up with a solution. When you go that way, you are bound to come up with in general solution. That is the essence of um, uh, convergent thinking. So convergent thinking comes to people who know how to set their consciousness, focus, and targets on the problems they are solving, as it were. And um, what is convergent thinking again? Now, convergent thinking is always used in conjunction, I mean, it's, I mean in conjunction with divergent thinking, because actually, um, it takes its root from this, the product of divergent thinking is what, that's the starting point for di convergent thinking. So before you can engage in convergent thinking, you must have undertaken, you know, divergent thinking, because if you don't have I mean, a, a, a wide pool of ideas that will come out from divergent thinking, you won't have good uh, results out of your convergent thinking. The raw material, therefore, for your convergent thinking is the product or the various ideas you have generated via your divergent thinking. I hope you are getting that point. That point is very critical. So it's not as if one is better than the other. They depend on one another. That's the point we're making here. It's a chain, it's a sequence. And these are all, all these, the application of these steps as, you know, will lead you to, to, to come up with witty inventions or creative solutions to those challenges. That's what we are targeting and working towards. I'm believing God that through this class, God will raise a generation of um, creative thinkers that will bring solutions to the problems of this country in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by God's grace, we are going to be one of them. Glory to God. So when new creative and innovative and unique ideas are presented as a result of the advantage thinking, systematic, procedural, precise, and time-effective convergent thinking is required to work on the results of the divergent thinkers. And so that's actually how it works. So again, what is convergent thinking? It is used as a tool in creative problem solving. You know, when an individual is using critical thinking to solve a problem, they consciously use standards or probabilities to make judgment. So you have to critically analyze each of those points. And in contrast with the abandoned thinking where judgment is deferred while looking for a solution, this one, you are actually going to decide on each point how valid they are at any point in time. You are going to critically analyze those points. And that is what. So, and now in recent years, of course, there is increasing acceptance of the fact that the real creative production needs both divergent thinking and cover. I've said it already, this is very critical. Don't ever think that, oh, convergent thinking is better, divergent thinking is not too good. No, you need, in fact, both, both um, dimensions of thinking, they are, they, are, they are quite necessary. In fact, you cannot have astute or solid or very good um, convergent thinking process without an astute and solid or robust divergent thinking step. Been, been implemented first. And of course, all that begins with correct identification and articulation of the problem they are solving and, and very solid incubation process. All the process, you know, I've shared with you the process of creativity. So all those basic steps are essential to come up with witty invention or creative solution. You can't jettison any step. That's the point we are making here. They are interdependent. They're interdependent and they're, all of them are needed. So what is now critical thinking? Because that is the tool you are going to use in your convergent thinking process. You take each idea that emanated from your divergent thinking or ideation process, you now subject each of those, I mean, potential solutions or ideas to critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? Ability to anal analyze information objectively and make a reasoned judgment, it involves evaluation of the source, the credibility of the source, the reliability of the source. You have to check it. How reliable? How was that data collected or information generated? 
how reliable was the process? How valid was that process? That's why in research, most of our instruments will subject them to reliability and validity. Because we want to be sure the data emanating from that instrument will be reliable and valid, or else you will fall into the error or that syndrome of garbage in, garbage out. And that will waste our time, money, resources, and energy. And it can even bring the entire country backward instead of forward. Because when you begin to use wrong research findings that are not reliable, it will just discuss, I mean, put the entire country in, in a kind of confusion. And instead of moving the country forward, there will be kind of, I mean, retrogression. And that's why we need to pay attention to the process. So we need to check the source of the data. How credible is, how reliable or valid is that source of data? We need to check the facts. In the process of critical thinking, those are things you do. You check the facts. Is there a fact or fallacy? And I hope you hope you know the difference between fact or fallacy or fable. Africa, particularly, we have so many fables and fallacies and, you know, and um, I mean, uh, kind of beliefs that are not substantiated with empirical studies. You can't even prove them. And a lot of people would make a mole out of those kind of fallacies. I mean, and those fallacies and which, and it's just causing us setback as, as a community, as a nation. So we've got to check our facts. Are they actually reliable information? Are you actually operating on reliable information? Then you check the observable, observable phenomenon and then the research finding. And all you are checking for is for authenticity and the credibility and the reliability of those information. That's where you can now go after. So critical articles also draw reasonable conclusions from a set of information and discriminate between useful and less useful details to solve problems. So that's what you are checking in your critical thinking process. The, 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 so I mean, the, the solid nature of that particular information you are checking. Now, creative, creative think, critical thinking also is the, is the intellectual, uh, it's the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating information gathered, you know, or generated through observation, for instance, and reflection reasoning, and so on. So you critically analyze. It's just repetition of what I've just said. So I don't want to belabor the point on, on this. And that is just the process of critical thinking. Uh, I want to quickly move forward again um, so that we can gain time, because I may not be able to spend even the whole of the 40 minutes with you, because I need to join a webinar now, for, you know, which is international. So uh, I, I need to actually move. So what is critical thinking again? Now, critical thinkers work diligently to develop intellectual virtues or intellectual integrity, intellectual humility, intellectual civility, intellectual empathy, intellectual sense of justice and confidence in reasoning. This is part of what critical reasoning is all about. You know, they realize that no matter how skilled they are as thinkers, they can always improve their reasonabilities and they will at times fall prey to mistakes in reasoning and human irrationality, prejudices, and biases. So you, we want to eliminate all this when you are engaging critical thinking. Prejudice, biases, distortions, wrong perceptions about situation and events. So you critically analyze that those, each of those ideas you've generated from your divergent thinking process. You subject them to this critical thinking so that you now begin to, that's how you now begin to eliminate some of those ideas until you now derive the best, maybe three, four, or five, which we are not going to subject to experimentation. That's the goal of critical thinking. That's the, and that's, that's actually the process of convergent thinking, as it was. That's the way to go. So, now, why do employers value critical thinking skill? Now, employers want candidates who can evaluate. I think that's where the world is going. And that's why you need to appreciate and thank God for being part of this kind of course. Because at times you wonder what the employers are looking for. It's not just your certificate these days. Part of the skills they are looking for is this ability, critical ability to engage in critical thinking, ability to engage in astute creativity and problem, I mean, creativity and problem solving skills and come up with witty solutions to the challenges, you know, relating to the company, I mean, to the objectives of the organization. And so most wise recruiters and employers now, they go beyond the certificate and begin to poke you with critical, I mean, assessment of your creativity level and critical thinking ability. 
In fact, there's a school of creativity now in America. Just Google it. There's a school of thought on it. It's a big domain now, all, I mean, in America and all over the world because these are the vital skills you need in any organization for, to, for you to engage anybody to be meaningful part of an organization. Even your, if you are going to even set up your own organization, it's very important you keep applying this principle of creativity and problem solving skill vis-a-vis critical thinking. So someone with critical thinking skill can be trusted to make decisions independently. People are looking for those who can work with minimal supervision. You don't need to push them. They're just creative. And we don't need constant hand holding, so to speak. You know, those are the kind of people they are looking, people are, employers are looking for now. So you begin to build yourself with this kind of skill. And then you have the record of proof for it. By the time you get to any interview, I'm telling you, you will be the man or woman or girl or boy that we, that we choose. So take hold of all this and make sure you prepare yourself accordingly. Now, let's see some examples of critical thinking skills. Now, a nurse analyzes the cases at hand and decides the order by which the patient should be treated. Now, to be able to come up with that kind of decision, that nurse should, must engage in astute critical thinking. I wish we can have enough time to actually experiment or play or, or, or I mean, do a test on a kind of mock um, dramatize this, this first situation. You, somebody will be a nurse and we have patients with different ailments and you now decide who, each other are you going to treat the patients? What are the parameters you're going to use? For instance, who can tell me what do you think is the first parameter to use to select the first patient to treat in this situation if you have about three, four, five patients and you have limited time to treat those patients and limited resources? Who is the first patient you are going to attend to and what will be the condition or parameter? That question is a question for critical thinking. Who can give me an answer, for instance, to that? You are a nurse, and you have about four or five patients lined up, and you have limited time and limited resources. Who are you going to answer to first? And what will be the condition or reason for putting that person first? Are you still there? Hello? Please let me know. Just know what oh, I yeah. Okay then. So, are you understanding? I'll, I'll treat the person in the most critical condition. Okay. Only do you you're only going to use critical? Yeah. Condition. I said I'll treat the person in the most critical condition. Yeah. Yes, I am, have heard you. But would that be? The, do you think that would be the only? I mean, the only viable or solid parameter you're going to use? What about the resources? If the person is critical, quite all right. Maybe you don't have the professional acumen to handle that person. Don't forget you're a nurse. Or you need a professional to assist you to attend to that person and that professional is not available yet. I expect you to factor in that particular condition too. You understand? Those are part of the, so you can see now that I have poked, now if, if both of us are engaged with an interview session and you just give, you give that answer alone, I'm giving this answer, who do you think they will select for that job? They will select me. Because you see, you are only taking one narrow condition. You are not applying just a psychology to it. You've got to check the whole picture. You've got to check all the necessary parameters and factor them in together. But I love your response. For even me, you making a response at all, I appreciate that. But I hope you are also learning. That's why it's good to get a feedback so that I want to see whether you are really following and know how to apply some of these principles. So I want to encourage you to read more about critical thinking skill. They are all available on the, on the net there. Read more on that particular field, please. It's a very interesting field. So that is that. Now, and you can see the second example. So at least that example we have just treated now is just good enough for us. More examples now. You can see it's always needed in all sectors, in all areas, and at, at every moment in life, at every point of decision making, you need the knowledge of critical thinking skill to make good and wise decisions per time, including choice of your life partner, including choice of career. You need to know how to apply critical thinking skill. And it's a skill that is actually needed. I mean, it's always employing convergent thinking. Don't forget that, please. You can separate convergent thinking from critical thinking skill. You can separate the two. You need them all together. So an attorney, for instance, reviews evidences and, device, and, device, and devises a strategy to win a case. An attorney is what they call lawyer. 
and or to decide whether to settle out of court. When you have you weigh your your your, your client situation, you you now judge whether this guy can win this case or I should I should this, I should settle I should opt for out of court settlement. So you, to, for you to come to that kind of decision, you have to weigh so many parameters. You have to weigh so many conditions to now decide to, and then be able to judge and preempt the way the, the case is going, whether your client is going to win or not, and whether it is wiser for you to settle out of court. So lawyers, they employ this skill all the time. Even the footballer on the field, whether to pass the ball or to hit it at the net, you, you need critical thinking at every point in time. Can I dribble all these four defenders and still get the ball into that or pass it to this person who will pass it back to me? Split second decision of critical thinking. It applies there too. The food to cook per time. Which kind of diet, which kind of meal, which kind of menu should you apply? You know, critical thinking skill. Even the dress to wear, to win. Maybe you are going for an event and you want, you know, a kind of, so you apply critical thinking or you have a particular, I mean, dress is not enough to make this dress and you want to combine them in a way. You need critical thinking skill all the way. And it's quite interesting. I hope you really get in this. So these are all samples of convergent thinking. So convergent thinking often employs critical thinking to drive the best solution. And that is the way it works. So, so why critical thinking skill? Everybody thinks the problem, of course, you're applying this on the problem. I'm going to pause here because I really need to join that webinar. Let me see how many slides remaining, whether it's something, ah, then I think definitely we need to push this to next week to complete this. So now, if we, since we still have seven ways to think more critically, then there's no point rushing it. I, I, I'm sure even the whole time I've spent virtually, if not close to more than 20 minutes now with you. So, uh, but let me quickly allow maybe one or two comments or maybe question before I log out. So, over to you, class. Don't forget to register your name in the chat box to just capture your attendance, please. And I hope you are aware, in it, it, I mean, we just, um, the Senate just decided last week that exam is likely to start. That is contingent on federal government confirming, um, I mean, the reopening, the full reopening of tertiary institution. So tentatively, the exam, a calendar, the calendar is out, I mean, tentatively, and um, the, from September 14, two weeks for the exam, and exam is supposed to conduct a pro term calendar, which is not yet confirmed because we are still waiting for the federal government. But I need to tell you so that you can begin to prepare very well, waiting on the federal government announcement. So we have tentative calendar for September 14 for the exam to start, for exam to start. So you need to begin to prepare, and it's going to be for two weeks. And then, of course, um, the other assignments and acting, you need to work faster on all of them so I can get them submitted. So the floor is open to you for the next two, three minutes, quickly. <laughs> 